In a previous video, I showed this cheap little logic analyzer from AliExpress, and I was absolutely raving about how awesome it is. And it is pretty good. There were quite a few questions from people asking about its performance. How do you install it? How does it work? And is it fast enough to actually analyze logic that's running at sort of megahertz frequencies? Because obviously I looked at an I2C example previously, and I2C is relatively slow. If we think about things like SPI, then actually that's at megahertz frequencies. So we need a very fast logic analyzer to be able to do that. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to start by showing you how to install it step by step instructions it's really simple. Then I'm actually going to do a teardown and see what's inside it just so we can find out why it is so cheap. And finally I'm going to compare it to one of these, so Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you look on YouTube and you search a Raspberry Pi Pico logic analyzer you'll find some really awesome videos showing that these can actually be used up to hundreds of megahertz. And again they cost around a similar price to this actual logic analyzer here so that they're pretty much equivalent in terms of cost. I'm going to show you very briefly how to quickly install one of these, so let's make a start. The first thing to do is download PulseView. And in my previous video, I said the website was down, it's not available anymore, yada, yada, yada. And actually someone commented and said that it is up now. And of course I've checked and it is up. So that, that's a massive time saving. That cuts out a load of steps. So simply all you need to do is go to Google, search for PulseView, Go to downloads, download the latest one for your operating system, so the nightly build. This is the 64-bit Windows version. I'm going to download it. I've already got it, so I won't click it. Simply go through the install process. This is without the logic analyzer plugged in. And you're done. So if you just run pulse view now, it won't actually work. What you need to do is install the driver. So you'll find that PulseView actually installs a, another application called Zadig. So if you open that, you get something like this. And now you can plug your logic analyzer in. Plugged in now, and you might need to go to options, list all devices. So I look down there, I can see everything plugged into my computer. And you can see there's a, a logic analyzer here. And it already says the driver's the WinUSB. And actually, when you plug yours in, it probably won't say that if it's the first time you've run it. It might say, just be blank here. And this might not be called USB logic analyzer, but it should be obvious which one it is. What you need to do is once it's there, find it in the list, click on it, and then put this WinUSB driver on it. So this will be blank. This will say WinUSB and you just click upgrade driver and it takes about five minutes. It takes a relatively long time. Obviously, I won't do it because I don't need to. It's already installed, but that's really it. Now you're ready to use PulseView. So when you first open PulseView, you're greeted with a screen like this. This is an eight channel logic analyzer, so D0 to D7. It's already detected it. It's this Sally uh, logic. But just to be sure, you can actually go connect device. You can come down to this particular driver here. And if you click scan for devices, you don't actually see anything and it won't let you click OK. But if you unplug your logic analyzer, plug it back in and then click scan devices, you can see it there. I think maybe you need to do that the first time you run it, but that's the only time. So now it's actually ready to go. And to use it, it's really simple. You just hit this run button. So you can see it's doing a million samples at 20 kilohertz. So it's taking 20,000 samples every second, and it's going to get a million samples worth. So this is going to be a very long acquisition. And look, you can see it's still going. 1 million divided by 20,000. What's that, 50 seconds? So there you go. 50 seconds to gather 1 million samples. So let's change that sampling rate now. So if we put it on 1 megahertz and hit run, we should get 1 second's worth of data. Okay, and you can see going from 0 to 1,000 milliseconds. So if we increase sample frequency and we don't increase the number of samples, we're going to get half the amount now. So we've doubled that. This remains the same. We're going to get about 500 milliseconds of data now. And you can see zero to 500. The only time that I found this doesn't hold true is if you want to do a lot of samples. So if I put this on 20 mega samples and I use a sampling rate of 24, I'd expect just less than one second here. And you can see I don't get anywhere near that. I get less than uh, 500 milliseconds. Something not quite right there. But anyway, that's the briefish user guide I can give you. Really, really simple. Um, let's have a look where we can actually get in 
seems there's a little tab here. Put my screwdriver in, pop it open. Okay. Interesting. So let's look at this side first. You can actually see a few things. Obviously, this is a voltage regulator. You've got a green LED and a red LED. I've not actually seen a green LED. There's actually space for the green LED to shine through, but I've not actually seen it, so I don't know why that lights up. Maybe when you click run, but it's on so briefly you don't see. You've got some resistors, a couple of capacitors. This is a 24 megahertz crystal with two little capacitors either side. I believe, looking closely at this, this is an EEPROM. And looking online, it's actually a two kilobyte EEPROM that contains the device configuration data. Let's flip this over. This is the main microcontroller here. So I can see CY7C. So it's actually a so it's actually a Cypress microcontroller with a part number of CY7 C680 13A. So you can see it's quite actually a complicated chip. It's got a lot of pins, a lot of I/O. Um, I'm guessing most of it's not used in this application. So it's quite a simple and quite neat device. Nice. It's just compression fit in there. So there you go, highly encourage you to pick one up, it's pretty awesome. Quite a lot of tech in there for something so cheap. I bet if you were to just buy that microprocessor on its own, it costs more than the actual device. That's how ridiculously cheap these things are. To set up the Pi Pico as a logic analyzer, you need to follow a few steps. So I basically went down a rabbit hole of watching a lot of YouTube videos, reading a lot of blogs. And actually I found this blog from Ruben to be extremely useful. It gives you step-by-step -step commands that you just need to type to actually compile a, a .uf2 files. A .uf2 is like a firmware file that you can upload to a Raspberry Pi Pico. And that's what you need to do. This is the first step. I was a little bit lazy because I, I went through these and I think I got to step five and it's taking like 20 plus minutes. So what I did is I basically Googled for this particular file and I found somebody had already made it on GitHub. Now this is probably not a sensible thing to do because if you look it's quite old, three years old, but for a quick test it, it kind of works. Certainly following Ruben's method which is created much more recently, February, is probably more sensible if you've got the time. But anyway if you download this file we can give it a quick go. So click download and what you need to do next is to hold the boot button down on your Raspberry Pi Pico and plug in your USB cable. Then release and what you see on the screen is like the bootloader for the Pico and all you need to do is to copy and paste the file you downloaded in there. So simply click paste, it copies in and then your Pico resets and that um, explorer window should disappear and that's it, it's done, it's ready to run. All you need to do then is to do the drivers again using Zadig. Here I am back in Zadig. All you need to do is find the device in here and believe it or not, I believe it's called Reset. So two of these appeared, Reset Interface 2, I think it was re Reset Interface 0. And when I installed the driver, it became this board CDC. I'm going to do a dummy run now, I'm not going to actually click anything. So imagine this says Reset Interface 0, click on it, this is blank, and then you go to USB serial CDC and click upgrade driver. Because I've already done it, it already recognizes it as whatever that is. So I'm going to close down Zadig and open Pulse View. Connect to device, Raspberry Pi Pico, serial ports, scan for devices, and it should appear there. And now you can see it's completely changed. So I'm doing 10,000 samples at 10 kilohertz, should get one second of data, hit run, and you can see I've got my one second, and I've now got all those channels, and I've actually got some analog channels as well. Obviously there's nothing connected to this, so it's just noise, but that's pretty cool, right? Well, one of the comments I got in that previous video is, can they do high speed signals? Can they do eight megahertz? So what I've done, I've got myself a second Pi and I've actually set this up with a eight megahertz clock on it, just an eight megahertz clock, nothing else. I've got the ground and the eight megahertz clock and I've got my Pico logic analyzer here and I'm gonna look at channel GP2. 
So I'm going to go ground, which is the third pin. So that's set up now, ready for recording data. Just hard to fit all on the screen at the same time. Just need to plug this into a battery or something to get it to power up. Okay, so I've set up a really simple demo there. Let me hit run and it's on channel two. Give me a second. Okay, so that is definitely not eight megahertz, but it's something. Let's go to a sensible sample rate. Let's go 20 and let's do a million samples. Okay, this looks more promising. So obviously if you don't sample enough, you're going to get aliasing and you know, you're going to get nonsense out. And that's the problem with these low speed analyzers. But let's zoom in and have a look. So in my opinion, although I don't know because I haven't checked on my oscilloscope, this should be a square wave, but it isn't. Look, it's, it's on basically two thirds of the time. If you think about its duty cycle, it's on 66% of the time. That's, that's definitely not right. Let's increase the sample rate. Okay, no, still problematic. Now you see we're getting kind of nonsensical results. We're getting some long pulses, some short pulses. And this, to be honest, may not be a very good test. Maybe it's because I've got these long wires here that's causing these issues. There might be some ringing. It's on a, a crappy piece of Veriboard and all these kind of things. So I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be so quick to discount this as being incorrect. But in my opinion, we should be seeing a completely square wave there on for as long as it is off. Let's just see how the uh, AliExpress logic analyzer handles this. I'm going to close pulse view. And this is the channel zero. And actually, I can see this second light light up now. I don't know if you can see that. So let me go back into pulse view. So we can see some data now. Oh, so. This is actually a lot better, maybe because I've used that old firmware for the Pi Pico, we can't count that, but this is exactly what I was expecting. One period of equal 125 nanoseconds, and we're not even sampling at such a high frequency here. And that looks absolutely spot on to how I imagine it should be. Let's sample even faster. So I've actually done the teardown already now, and I know there's a 24 megahertz clock in there. Now, something weird's happened here, look. Still got an eight megahertz period, but the duty cycle is no longer 50%, which is a little bit weird. But anyway, as you can see, it does work. It can detect it and it looks a lot better than it did on the Pi Pico. But I think that just means the Pi Pico needs some more investigation. To wrap up this video really quickly, I showed you how to install two different logic analyzers. So one of them is the cheap couple of dollar one from AliExpress. And one of them is a Raspberry Pi Pico based we use PulseView to do this. There are other softwares available, but I really like PulseView. I think it's such a nice user interface and it's got all those different protocols to decode already baked in. It's really cool. We did a little bit of a teardown of that cheap device and basically saw how it works. And finally, we did a bit of a comparison looking at an eight megahertz clock signal. And we saw that really neither device is actually that good at it. And I actually think the Pi Pico could perform much better. Probably haven't got the most latest firmware and things like that. So there's definitely more more room for experimentation there. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, please pop them down below. And of course, please like and subscribe because it really helps the channel. See you in the next one.